Yeah, so you were talking about um, about just the ideas of imagination and truth. Yeah, I mean, I I was talking about this with my best friend the other day because we just finished reading um, uh, the novel. Um, oh gosh, the title is is it's <laughs> the Oscar. Oh, calling for a blanket dance. Oh yeah, yeah. America. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Have you read that one? I have. I had Oscar on. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So good. Okay. So good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were talking about you know there's I don't want to spoil the book but there's a part where there's some ritual happening because one of the women is pregnant and there seems to be a something going on and so she goes to kind of a like a shaman type person mm -hmm. and there's something that happens and that person starts choking on feathers while treating her and whatever. And, you know, I'm a, you know, I can be a very scientific minded person, but I totally believe someone can be choking on feathers too. Um, and so I kind of wanted that uh, world to exist in this book where, mm. uh, where things can be true, but unreal, if that makes sure. any sense, sure. or sure. unreal to some people, but real to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That make, that does make a lot of sense that there's a scene, if you remember, I think, I think towards the end of the, of Oscar's book, um, where there they're like at the high school or something like that. And they're like, they're all sitting in their chairs and waiting for maybe the party to start or like the, I think the powwow to start. Mm -hmm. And it's just like so much community. Was, that's such a great, I love that part of the book. Oh, yeah, just, the community's just coming together. And it's yeah, like, yeah. 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 I know. think they're waiting for that forever house raffle or something like the that. Raffle yeah. Maybe it was. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I love okay. that. I mean, th there's so many, so many gems in that book. Yeah, I I did not do it justice. My explanation right on with it. Um, there there was you know I think whether it was literally gang members or not, I think so many of us can uh, kind of understand the couple of stories on the the narrators talking about you know like at at the all girls Catholic school, but it's like kind of playing up like oh my god, like we're such gang members, we're such cholas, <laughs> right? That kind of thing. You know, all, everyone always kind of trying to sound a little cooler, a little bit more dangerous, right? It's such a teenage thing. Um, there's a lot there, I guess, about, um, you know, just about who you present to the world. Um, it seems that the narrator is somebody really trying to escape the, kind of get out of her own shell, get out of her own way as well, right? Yeah, I think a lot of self-discovery for young people is trying on different um, personas and, and mm -hmm. seeing which ones feel true. And sometimes we kind of overshoot in yep. thinking, you know, we're like, you know, I'm really a skateboarder. It's like, actually, no, I, I can't even balance on this thing. Or, you know, with what, what, whatever it be, like, you know, a lot of makeup. And then you realize like, oh God, I feel like a clown. This is really not who I am. Um, so I think that uh, in that story in particular, the narrator was trying on uh, a persona to feel cool, to feel accepted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes these things are near misses and sometimes, you know, they really land. Whether that whether that one's based on you or not, I'm a I'm a fellow graduate of an of an single sex uh, Catholic school. So, oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Um, the so even just the title is the image is just you know uh, fastened in my brain. What's the word? Not fastened, emblazoned in my brain is the Sophia Loren glasses. Yeah, right? mental health. Yeah, mental health is a right? big theme in the book. Yeah. I, I, I remember my dad when I was young saying like we were watching some movie and he's just like Sophia Loren came out like she was the most beautiful woman in the world. I'm yeah. like Sophia Loren, you know, the Italian in me was like, yes, yes, yes. She was. <laughs> right? But uh, but just those glasses. I mean, that's so that's such a great image because I think so many of us, you know, we're, we're young people, maybe the younger people than us wouldn't get it. But I think so many of us do. Um, so that really kind of pulls the reader in. But there's, you know, there's so memorable where the girl is asking, the narrator is asking her mom. She's basically like, hey, how how would I know if I slipped into insanity? Like, how would I know? It's all, you know, if it's a subjective thing. The mom was kind of like, oh, no, you would know. Right. And I think the, I think the girl wants like to quantify it. Right. Like, yeah. yeah. Is that kind of do you think is the mom kind of like humoring her and just like or is she just kind of like, ah, you know, kids will be kids. Is she trying to kind of talk her down a little bit, you know, trying to calm her down with kind of what, yeah. I kind of wonder what is in the mom's answer. I think the mom, uh, there's multiple things going on. 
I think the mom is trying to just downplay this and have a normal afternoon. Sure. And, and the daughter's bringing up some really heavy topics. Sure. And the mom is driving, so she doesn't want to be distracted. She doesn't want to, you know, get into this really weighty conversation. That's one thing. And the other thing I was trying to get at um, is, uh, in general, Latinos avoid talking about mental health. Mm. Um, and it's kind of, you know, I, in some families taboo, I guess, and other families just like, there's this attitude like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like you'll feel fine tomorrow. Um, just like, you know, you know, everything's fine. You're just mm -hmm. blowing this out of proportion. And I think the mother's also doing some of that, which is um, probably a disservice to her daughter. Um, but, you know, maybe she didn't have the language herself to, to talk about this mm -hmm. in a way that would be satisfying for mm -hmm. either one of them. As a non-native speaker, but I wonder if the expression no pasa nada might fit there. Yeah, right. totally. Not a big deal. Right? Yeah. It So, you know, as the narrator goes on with the, um, I, I mean, I think, is that is that a lot of where the title comes from? This idea of the self-crippling part of it? Is it, is it just this idea? Because I mean, so many of us can relate to that. Just like getting in your head so much that you, you're, the, you're kind of like the, you're the one who trips yourself up. Is that kind of? Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah, and and like ruminating over right, memories ruminating. that yeah. that are maybe you know they happened, yeah, but like is it the most important memory you need, or do you need to think about this memory all the time? Probably mm -hmm. not. Sure. Um, but I think that especially when people are going through some sort of like mental health issue, uh, there's this sense of doom that happens. I know personally, I've dealt a lot with anxiety where mm -hmm. I get this sense, like I always feel like this, which isn't true. You know, mm -hmm. there's plenty of times where I'm not anxious. Um, but I think it's really common when people are struggling to feel like this is a permanent thing. This is always like how I think this is always mm -hmm. what I feel. This is going to last, you know, be with me forever. And, um, and I think the title kind of is, a hat tilt to that kind of feeling that that there's like a cycle happening that someone you know the narrator trapped in to an extent sure and to a different level when you're a teenager right you 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 really do feel like this is this is it this yeah. is the end of, this is the end of the world this, nobody has ever felt this way mm -hmm. right? like you said I'm, I'm always going to feel this way i'm not going to yeah there's this there's an extra level to it. i remember there's a great line from my from the outsiders where you remember the outsiders I never read it, but oh, I wow. know of it the way that you seem to know of yeah. <laughs> Narnia. Sure, right. <laughs> Good call. But just, um, yeah, Cherry Valance, is, she's like the rich girl, but she's just kind of like, um, you know, the parents are always trying to talk down this other character. Like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And it's like, no, in at this time in that person's life, it's important. And that's all that matters, you know? Yeah, at, absolutely. At this time in this person's life, yeah. I remember being in eighth grade and at eighth grade graduation, one of my friends who I had known for years was going to go to a different high school the following year. And I still remember sitting in the car with my mom crying about, and we were parked at the old bakery because my mom was going to go in and buy sandwich bread for us. Still remember crying that, you know, I'm never going to get over the fact that my friend's going to a different high school. And my mom was like, sure you are. Like, you're never right. going to even remember this. Right. Like, by the time you go to college, like, this will be the, and I still remember it to this day. <laughs> like, <laughs> it felt like the end of the world. Ah, that's a great, yeah. So you probably got a story in you about sitting at the bakery, right? Just like Sandra Cisneros did. Yeah, just like, just yeah. a little sad. Instead yeah. of, you know, another sad yeah. girl story. Right. The sad <laughs> girl comes through. Um the sad girl escapes. It's not, not. I mean, she she talks about it as escaping, right? She goes to you know New England, goes to college, carefree, like everyone's supposed to be in college, and they're, you know, what do you call skinny skating, skinny dipping slash skating, or you know something like that, right? Yeah. And she meets this guy. I mean, I assume there's romantic designs in in that case, and he seems to be cool until he mentions he says some of the effect of you know oh and and you write about it so well. You you write about how nonchalant he is. In saying something like, um, you know, oh, my housekeeper's from the same country where your family's from. Yeah. That, like, am I getting the line right, more or less? Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, just kind of this uh, casual connection between the like the housekeeper, the maid, and yeah. the narrator of the story, and is just devastating to her because here she thought she was gonna have this, you know, 
romantic encounter Mm -hmm. and suddenly she's like has the wind knocked out of her basically you think it's it's such so devastating just in the one-on-one with with this guy or is it more kind of a bigger thing about maybe her place at the school i don't know yeah i think definitely her place in the school i mean because of, uh, for other reasons, like, you know, this was, she had been romanticizing going to New England from mm. Texas for so long that she had this ideal in her head. And then when she actually gets there, instead of it being, you know, the perfect place, like she immediately gets knocked down a peg or several. Mm. Um, and so I think that the devastation was just, uh, I guess, more powerful or hit yeah. differently because of that. Right. Um, you know, so the, the narrator takes on, you know, goes to therapy in different ways. Um, later on in the book, she's asked about her first memory of despair and that was so telling or so relatable. I think, you know, she was kind of like, where to begin, you know, um, but she goes like to sand therapy Mm -hmm. and it's, it's such like a, kind of like an involved process and there's little dolls or little toys and this and that. And basically the narrator is just like, this is kind of all for naught. Yeah. What do you, what was she maybe trying to get in therapy or do you, do you get the impression maybe that she was kind of like, just kind of did it because she thought she was supposed to, or she was pushed to it or kind of, you know, nudged that way. You know, I think that these days there's kind of like, you know, there's so many memes and jokes, like guys will do anything, you know, like, but go to therapy and yeah, like, yeah. you know, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a running joke that like everybody needs therapy and I'm not saying people don't need therapy. Absolutely. Right. Um, But I think, um, you know, something that's maybe a little bit controversial to say is that we kind of assume like it's a one size fits all. And just like students, you know, I'm an educator, but students are different learners. There's some Mm -hmm. students that have to read things to absorb it. There's some students who have to like write things out. Others have to, you know, hear things or do some kind of kinesthetic learning. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's, I think therapy should be different too, you know, like I, if, if we know that that's the type of, you know, spectrum of people that we have who are, mm-hmm. you know, learning, then also for healing, I think there needs to be a, a, a whole spectrum. And some of the things that, you know, people try don't really work. And I think um, I'll be the first to say, you know, sometimes things don't work, but you got to try them. Yeah, fair enough. Um, there's a really, um, intriguing, like, uh, like juxtaposition that you set up where the, the narrator has, I think one of the stories is called tabloid totems, which is so, such a great title in many ways, the alliteration and such, but just this idea of totems. And I, as you know, it sounds like she, she dated a, a, a model and this model reminds her of another famous model who gets, you know, is on the billboards and the magazines and the whole deal. And then eventually that, that model was, I guess, like, like uh scratched stabbed yeah he got attacked yeah yeah right disfigured is what i was looking for um by some sort of deranged fan is the totem this idea of kind of like looking up to this kind of maybe um idealizing or or something that happened in the past like you know oh oh he was so great and we were so good together or we we missed out or i kind of wonder about the idea of the totem yeah yeah i mean i think especially um for I think early relationships or people uh, in their twenties and things, you know, mm-hmm. the, the goal is like, get like, you know, the hottest person you can date. Like, isn't you know, that, isn't, get that someone... it? isn't that life? I mean, <laughs> what else is there, right? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I lived in New York city in my twenties. And so like, I was totally consumed with, uh, you know, superficial things like mm-hmm. getting all the manicures and like, uh, you know, just like dating hot people and, mm-hmm. you know, being seen and taking photos and like, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and I think that the, that title is, well, I know that title is definitely um, acknowledging that, you know, there's this mm-hmm. totem of attractiveness. There's a totem of like what we aspire to be connected to. So even if we are no longer, um, you know, dating someone like just there's kind of this, um, I guess, currency or some sort of leverage to be like, oh, yeah, he's my ex or whatever. Mm. Um, and so it's that kind of uh, wanting that proximity to yeah. fame. Sure. Did, were you ever on TMZ? Never. No, no. no. You still can be. You still can be. <laughs> Hopefully not. That's not a good place yeah, to be. Yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. Yeah. 
mostly like 99% negative things, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I haven't read anything positive there. <laughs> um, so it was, it was used that, you know, in a different way in a, in a story later on, but I feel like what you're just talking about goes to a quote that I really thought was again, so apropos was quote, her religion is the power of suggestion. And that was, that was about the piece where the narrator reads about a woman who I think stabbed her kids to death even, you know, and, and after that, it was like the knife, you know, seeing the knife, she couldn't hold a knife, just that power of suggestion, right? Where she, she couldn't get that out of her mind. You talked about ruminating before, but even just yeah. the, the idea that, you know, oh yeah, everyone's supposed to date the hottest people, you know, blah, blah. her religion is the power of suggestion, right? Yeah. Did, um, go ahead. Well, first, I just want to point out my cat is right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> my cat's impatient. Like, hey, pay attention to me. You've been oh, talking to the this. Corner. There you are. Yeah, really interested in going to the bedroom, but that's not going to happen right now. Selena. <laughs> um, so the story that you're referencing um, is actually I took, you know, I read where writers do this and I had never done this, but I took I read the news and there was this nanny in New York City who uh, had been working for our family for many years and kind of snapped and um, and murdered uh, all but one of the children that she was um, taking care of. So that story was inspired by real life events. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, so I am someone who's really obsessed with delusion of all kind. And so mm. um, I'm always reading about delusion. I'm always really interested in things like, you know, the power of words, the power of suggestion. Uh -huh. um, and so that was a really um, fun, not, I mean, this story I matter is, yeah, is, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, is serious, but it was fun to explore that topic um, at a remove Sure. Uh, for me personally. So sure. it was, yeah, that's my little homage mm. to, to the creepy. Hmm. Like all of us, you know, the, any despair, any traumas, any, you know, grief, I mean, obviously it doesn't, ha doesn't go away and, you know, into adulthood, it'll follow us. And um, the, the narrator talks about the honeymoon and kind of some of the traumas following her into uh, the marriage and in particular the honeymoon in, like in Croatia. Uh, they go and they visit kind of like a little, I don't know, like knickknack type of store, right? Mm -hmm. And the quote is, the mall overall is described as quote a mall that was bleak and ill conceived like us some to that effect <laughs> um which is you know right, kind of funny and and clever and, and all of the above i wonder you know there's not a lot about the the marriage necessarily it is mostly about the the youth the young days and the teenage days and all that but i just wonder about kind of like the through line between that 14 year old girl who said if I go insane, am I going to know to the girl who felt <laughs> despair? I, I, I failed to mention yeah. you know, that she really took um, her, I think it was her aunt or her great aunt's death. She took that really hard. There's obviously a really close connection there. Kind of wonder how you can kind of chart like what happened earlier in life and maybe the way that it, it played out with, with the marriage and in the early days of the marriage, just the early days. Yeah. I think that, um, I mean, here is someone who is keenly aware of her mental health Mm -hmm. um and mental states that uh, the story in which she thinks she's going to go insane it, it opens with her saying like her consciousness uh expanded like you know i think it was like a thousand room hotel or something like she remembers the moment in which like suddenly um she was you know inhabiting a larger space mm -hmm. um at least you know consciously um, and so when you, when she made that shift into, you know, living in this ultra aware world, mm -hmm. um, I think that she just made herself, you know, people who, who are that aware are obviously going to be, um, live life with a lot of, uh, joy and suffering just because there's such a wide range of, of what can happen when you're, uh, acutely aware of you know what you're feeling or when you're super observant and can mm -hmm. see you know like this person is you know with the story um in college like this this guy just said like the absolutely most devastating thing to me um and it's like you know totally disrespectful to me at this point and so I think that um you know it we get to see the development 
Um, and then, you know, there's definitely stories in which the marriage is very rocky and, and not headed in a good place. And then there's, you know, stories in which she kind of makes a comeback. She definitely. kind of like has some snappy responses to mm -hmm. some of the things that get thrown her way. Um, so she's definitely maturing. She's finding her own way. Um, she has her own agency about things. Um, and, you know, there's even like maybe an optimistic, you know, the story with yeah. the, the husband's glasses and stuff right. where, you know, it's not all. Um, Debbie Downer stuff. There's no, not at some all. moments of, of joy too. So I think by the time we get to the end of the book, uh, she becomes a lot more well-rounded in, mm -hmm. uh, I guess her emotional landscape becomes more uh, varied and she also kind of finds her own way. Yeah, no, definitely. There, there is, it's, it's not all Debbie Downer for sure. The There's at least one story and you talk about like awareness, you were talking a lot about awareness, awareness. And I think people like us, I think people like the narrator, I mean, you know, who are, who do ruminate a lot. I mean, so many of us are, you know, thinkers and just go churns and churns and churns. Often, we often see ourselves as like observers of things that we're actually taking part in. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so definitely. that was so cool. With, with, that was so cool with that switch to third person, at least one of those stories where it's kind of like looking out or, you know, looking in, if you will, at, um, you know, in, in a third person point of view, more objective, I guess. And then the last piece, the abacus of self improvement, I think the mm -hmm. abacus of improvement. Um, I love that piece. It's second person, and it's you. And you talk about snappy. The last two three sentences are real short and choppy, um, but you talk about the agency, and it's really cool to see just that um, where she goes from to almost like giving advice at the end, right? Yeah, and absolutely. That's, if that's not agency. What is right? Yeah, she's come full circle. Whereas mm -hmm. before she was a little lost and kind of it took her a minute you know to respond to people or she would remove herself from situations that were overwhelming by the end she's like hey i've got this down like let yeah. me tell you this is what you need to do mm -hmm. thank you for like i said for providing what you know could be a read uh for a class we you know the whole the whole um collection you know individual pieces i really want to go through and kind of pick out which ones i feel like i could definitely teach them in my in my classes and, um, you know, there's so much richness there. That's the cool thing about having so many different stories that in a 54 page piece is like, I could use 10 of them, 15 of them, you know, um, it's really, I feel like my students would be really receptive to it. Congrats on it. There's a reason why you won the gold line award. I'd love to know what, uh, maybe if you're working on anything, uh, anything at the end in these days, a new project. Yeah. Well, thank you. And if you do teach me, let me know. I'll be oh, happy I will. to do I will Zoom with your class if they have questions. Okay. I would be happy to talk okay. flash if they want. And I would keep it a total surprise. I'd be like, do you have any questions about the book? Here she is. You know. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Um, yeah, and hopefully my cat will join us too next time. Oh, please, We're, please. Okay. That's a must. Um, so I, so I have a, a novel coming out in 2024. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, like I said, maybe it's a campus novel. It's a lot of things. It's an epistolary novel. Oh, so it epistolary. is. Yeah, it is a letter. I mean, yeah, to mm. uh, to someone. And uh, it's also got a UK publisher, which is exciting. Congratulations. So somebody might read it um, on the other side of the pond. Yeah. Um, and so that is going to come out in March of 2024. Mm -hmm. And I am working now on a memoir. Um and th that is slow going, um, <laughs> but, but it's fun. Uh, every day I chip away at it. Um, so that's, that's kind of what's in the pipeline right now. Does, does the memoir go from like birth to now, or is it maybe like a certain part of your life or so not sure? Oh, no, 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 no. So like, I think every memoir really has to have like one or two subjects, right? Like Roxane yeah. Gay's hunger is about, you know, uh, her physical body, her relationship to her, you know, physicality, her appetite, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the experiences of her body. Um, and so the, um, memoir is focused on, uh, the fact, the experience my father had being drafted into the Vietnam war mm. and his exposure to agent orange. And, oh, no. uh, that kind of impacted my family, his health, my health, um, so that's kind of the the triangle of it uh, is the family agent orange and you know the mm. the draft experience. Oh, um, so it's kind of heavy stuff. I think I, mm. I um, gravitate to some of the meteor topics, sure. uh, but uh, definitely 
uh, trying to make it a read for everyone. I appreciate that. Where, where can we find you online? Any uh, special places to buy math for the self crippling? Sure. So uh, I have a website. Uh, it's my name, UrsulaVillarealMora.com. You can visit me there. Um, I am also on threads. Oh. Um, I'm no longer on that website that used to be Twitter. Smart, smart. Good for you. Good for you. Um, and I, uh, you know, you can buy math for the self crippling at an indie bookstore. Like I said, it's, you can order it online from bookshop.org, mm -hmm. or if you want to give, um, you know, some business, like I said, to Powell's or McNally Jackson, feel free to do that. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for talking to me. I look forward to the 2024 release and maybe that, you know, the memoir as well. It's been awesome talking to you and uh, um, please say hello to your cat for me as well. Oh, she says hi too. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.